Hey guys, Jason here with a word to the wise. Um, I'll jump right into it because I got little time. Um, looking at the rapture, spoken about it many times, comparing things in in 1 Corinthians 15, looking at Revelations. Um, you can look at 2 Peter chapter 3 where uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, where it talks about the thief. Also see that in Matthew 24. It gives a little bit of a, a kind of a parable story about the thief. Um, but a video that I scrolled past and caught my eye and I was like, ah, I don't want to, but I should, you know. So I went, I, I clicked on the video and Right away they start saying, well, here's proof in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, one of them, that Jesus spoke on, on the rapture. And it points to John 14, chapter 14. And in that, the very verses 1 through 4, paraphrasing, it's the, um, is a, in my house are many mansions that I have prepared for you. You know, if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you or I would have how that verse goes. But they're saying, well, look, here it is. So I commented back to the channel and I said, well, you really should look what it's saying, because that's the beginning of a chapter. And as I've shown many times, you can't just look at a chapter and think that it's talking about something completely different because it's a different story, a different day. A lot of times, it's just a continuation of, of verses, you know, into another chapter. How they broke it up, decided, I don't know. But I told them, well, look at chapter 13 before that, go over it. Because I think that's when they're looking at, they're at the Last Supper. Jesus washed the, the disciples' feet. He gives a lot of information in that, in that sitting, you know. It's a lot you don't get from, I think, Matthew, Mark and and Luke so I took it upon myself afterwards just to go through those you know I, I think I went on my audiobook and listening from chapter 12 13 14 15 and you can even jump into 16 if you want to just keep going but there is what I have found some amazing things I'll leave it at that so and I wrote these down the verses in chapter 12 but then you can go to chapter 13 and then you can go to chapter um, 15 and there's a whole bunch of verses that match up very similarly and I'll show you guys but then there's also some in 13 that go to 15 that go even further down the line into 15 again and I might just read the, the 15 stuff all together because it's, it's verses 12 through 21. All of it applies to what is being said in 12 and 13. So let me just kind of leave my little notebook open so I can look over so I don't get too far lost. Um, John. There's my bookmark. Nope, oh, it's on the wrong page. Hang on. Let me get into John. And I, I've, I've actually done this video a few times and I just keep going back because I keep, I don't like the way it comes out. Plus my reading is horrible, so bear with me. <laughs> but like I said, th these are things when you, when you see something and you, you have questions and you want to show somebody and you question and you go into scripture and you find something like that's when scripture comes to life it comes alive because all of a sudden things that you didn't really notice before but you go in with a question all of a sudden these answers just pour out it's quite amazing so um chapter 12 verses 23 through 26 i've gone over these so hopefully i can read them a lot better <laughs> and jesus jesus answered them the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life will lose it. Whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. 
If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. So right away, whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for life eternal. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. How did I go out of this world? I died. Let's go to chapter 13. This is speaking on Peter's denial. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow me afterwards. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered him, will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. Here again, now what did we just read before this? Peter asking him in his denial, why can I not follow you? What did Jesus say just before that in chapter 12? If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servants be also. But Peter said, why can I not follow you? I do follow you. Where I'm going, you cannot follow me. You will not follow me, but you will follow me later. And Peter was then crucified after Jesus was already gone. But, and I think it's in um, the end of John or in Luke, the end of Luke, where he, he calls them back in and he asks them three times, you know, will you, you know, will you, you know, serve my sheep? And he, yes, of course I will. Or do you love my flock? However he says that. And I believe it speaks more towards that. Verses 12 through 15, right? It says 16 and 17, but we'll, we'll just kind of jump through into that anyway. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. And then it goes on to uh, 18. If the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of this world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Now, with that reading, let's just jump back into 13 again. Uh, just before the Peter's denial verses, so this is... 34 and 35 just before 36 where we were before a new commandment I give you that you love one another just as I have loved you you also are to love one another but this all people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another and Peter saying why can I not follow you now I will lay down my life for you and Jesus answered will you lay down your life for me and then you go right over to 15 You love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friend. Did Peter lay down his life for his friend as he said he would? No, he didn't. But he gave him the story shortly after. Now there's many more amazing things if you do that and you follow the verbiage, I am the true vine. The father is the fine dress. You look at that, the branch, the fruit, and then you, you take those verses that talk about 
you know, it bears much fruit in 12, 13, 14, 15, and you c compare all these, it makes an amazing comparison of that. And what does it say in that one part? I believe in, in 12. I'll read just one more time if I'm not too far off here. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life will lose it, but whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If you're not trying to save your life in this world and you allow yourself to just let the chips fall as they will because that's what's going to happen in this future right and i just saw uh, a clip from armor of truth and it hit me in a strange way watching and it was talking about the world assembly meetings and how they're trying to circumvent their own guidelines and rules and and bypass certain things because other countries aren't coming to the table in agreement they just want to keep moving and and do whatever they want And the only thing that hit me after I watched that, that I had to go back and I was the first and only commenter I had seen so far on that video where the link was set on Armor of Truth's community page, is I said, well, think about it. If we're in the time of revelations, this is the judgment coming to the world, not coming to his enemies, those who are enemies against us. We are not in darkness. We are in light. We understand where we're going. But they do not know what's going on. They're trying to take control of this world, thinking they're going to rule it. But once they've gone too far, Jesus is going to come. Ah! Wow, that was crazy. So right in the middle of that, all of a sudden, the emergency broadcast just happened. I guess all we can do is wait. Where was I? If this is judgment coming on the world, who are we to fight against that judgment? People saying that, you know, stop it. Yeah, yeah, you can go out there and ask him to stop. You know, we're not gonna try to forcefully, but we also don't wanna be false prophets trying to run with those, because if the Antichrist comes and says, you know, we need to stop these guys, stop these devices, stop the, you know, the damage that could happen to the world, and we gotta set up a, a new system, and we're gonna make a new, a no. If we know the time and seasons we are in, and this world trouble has come to the world, that is the best way that I could assess the, the kickoff of the end times has begun. Now, whether the seals have already been done, whether they're waiting to happen, the horsemen to ride, I don't know. Whether the trumpets have gone and, and, and moved about, it's for another video. Trust me, because I got some goods. Um, and to say, you know, we know that the Antichrist hasn't fully gone through the uh, Second Thessalonians sitting in the seat demanding himself to be worshipped, you know, as in Revelation 13 and the MOTB hasn't come about. So we're not at that part yet. To say that there is even a seven year tribulation, well, the seals and the trumpets might be outside of that timeline altogether because if you're looking at the the one that comes out of the pit well he comes out of the earth he doesn't come out of the sea so i don't want to get down that road right now because it gets way too confusing and you start looking at it and asking questions and trying to follow a timeline and you look at is it a seven-year tribulation where does that come from other than Revelation 13 is the only place that really gives us a timeline of 42 months and another 42 months. And then I think, yes, you can go into Daniel and there's, there's a list of days, but there's a lot of different parts that list days. Again, for another time, 
more research is needed. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Just a word to the wise. Hopefully this uh, has made sense. This is totally a different way that I've laid this out versus the way I've been trying to do that for the last three or four times. So um, sorry about the breakup, but I forgot about the whole uh, alert test that was happening on the 4th. So we'll see what uh, everybody says tomorrow. Just a word to the wise guys. God bless.